Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. We are your hosts, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and... I am the Adam Glass, and I'm always, I'm going to continually laugh every time you say welcome to the next episode. Just Why? Because it feels like you're welcoming us to the future. <laughs> it is the future. Uh, it, it's always the future. Now it's the future. No, now. Well, in, now. in reality, in reality, it's quite a bit the past. So. Yeah, because you guys are probably listening to this, like, maybe six months, a year? Yeah. Yeah, probably, probably closer to about nine months away from, yeah. from when we're actually recording this. What's our film for today? Our film for today is Nanook of the North, the 1922, I'll say proto-documentary by uh, Robert J. Flaherty. <laughs> um, interesting fact, actually, uh, to, to tie this a little bit into last week, um, uh, the Wikipedia page on Charles Dickens' controversies is really much longer than you would expect it to be. Uh, but dude hated Eskimos. Wait, um, Charles Dickens? Charles Dickens hated Eskimos. Why? Uh, at, at one point, he, he had a very noble, savage sort of view of them. Uh, but then, uh, oh, I can't remember who it was. <laughs> one of them bought his house. <laughs> one of them bought, bought his house. It was terrible. No, no. Um, there was, there was an For expedition. For anybody who hasn't listened to the previous episodes. <laughs> there was an expedition to the Arctic um, where in uh, they... They got lost or something. Um, supplies dwindled. They ended up there was there was like a mutiny. Um, people died, and there was some evidence of cannibalism. Uh, and the local Inuit tribe found uh, found the remnants, basically. You know, and they, any any survivors, if there were any, they found. They got them back to society. Um, so what would what had happened was you know that with poor planning and everything fell apart and it was tragic, but the wife of the head of the expedition, uh, and later Charles Dickens after she convinced him of such, went on this big publicity public tour saying you know the official story's not true the Eskimos killed them all. What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this and it was a, a very movie. it was very it was a very popular public theory that. Uh, Dickens really, really bought into, and it's very unfortunate. Yeah, it uh, is. Yeah. Like, oh, and that kind of leads us into this film. <laughs> yes. In that. That very much holy leads us into this film. Holy heck. <laughs> I've okay. okay, so I had to watch this film as, we're just going to get this right off the bat, okay? Yeah. So, I was an anthropology major in university. Yes. Uh, but I did not watch this film in anthropology class because no one in their right mind would show this as an anthropology uh, documentary. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but I did have to watch this in film class, and I did not remember it being this racist. <laughs> My goodness. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call this movie racist. Oh, um, this movie is racist now. Okay, yes. No, it is. It is. No, it's certainly... It's... Um, and, 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 I, and again, I want to just yeah. put this to bed right now, because people will say, well, it was 1922. But here's the thing. For scholarly people in 1922... This is still racist. Yeah. Okay, yeah. like, we're, you know what I mean? Like, for people who are supposed to be learned, yes. at this point, the things he says for are people racist, who even for that time. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, no. there were, I, there have to have been people who went and saw this movie at the time and said, man, that little guy was pretty racist. This is, this is definitely, this is definitely... You know, Flaherty wasn't necessarily a filmmaker, you know, uh, prior, not prior to making this because he filmed tons and tons of footage for an actual, you know, very blatantly fictional tale. He was going for, you know, a, a much broader, maybe travel log, I guess is more, is better, better suited, I guess, not necessarily a fictional film. Um, and he lost all that footage. But before he made that footage, he took a three week course on, on how to run his camera. In Rochester, New York, <laughs> um, he bought the camera because he he, he you know he was an explorer uh, up around Hudson Bay. He met all these you know Inuit and he liked them. 
Um, so he wanted to you know, show the and, world about that. And that's the weird thing is like when yeah. you read about his motivations, you're like, oh, yeah. this yeah. guy has the best of intentions. Yeah, He's but like, it's. A, I met it, a bunch of Inuits. I thought, wow, this is a cool go- group of people. I want to show people. But yeah. man, somewhere well, along the lines, he really lost the thread on that one. Yeah, his uh, his he's a, only a slightly worse anthropologist than he is a filmmaker. He, yeah, right. He, he did go. a little less a little less research on that subject uh, than yeah. a three week course. Um, right. He he did what he read in yeah. in popular. M- yeah, media at so, the time. So this movie is, you know, it's it's the first it's the first feature length documentary, really. You know, early film we had the actualities, you know, the the short documentaries on industrialists and and workers and this and is and that's life. the weird it's thing is that thing. those are and I've seen some of those. Those are much yeah. more in the spirit of documentary than yeah. this is. Well, those are those are much mind. more observer. You know, this is this is right. A in which happening. in my mind is what a documentary. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's really what a documentary should be. Like though, he does so much editorializing in this. Yeah, that you kind of like. Yeah. You can't there's a lot discern of, yeah. reality. Yeah, there's a lot of noble savage in this, and there's a lot of you're a credit to your race uh, sorts of. Things. Yeah, well, it it starts right from the beginning. Like yeah. the I I I had forgotten most of the title cards. Um, yes. It, in the in the eight years or whatever since I watched it, but um, yes. the first time and the first title card has this really overwhelming thing, like in an environment that only this race could survive, yes. which already gets into this thing where like at this point, as far as I can remember from my studies, anthropology, which he is not, I know, but yeah. has already moved on beyond the idea of like individual races with unique racial traits yeah and this is borderline getting into like we we did talk about this before we started recording but getting into like eugenics almost like yeah these these people have been crafted to survive the north yeah. by a we're god already... who thinks it's funny to make people live in in hell i don't know yeah. it's like yes. we're already I, I to a point where it's it's accepted that everybody is a common stock yeah um, that everybody is just human yeah, and and yeah. we start right at the very beginning with this, yeah, this sort of like borderline eugenics notion or something like that of like yeah. these super super cold adapted northern people. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, yeah, they've adapted in the same way that humans adapt everywhere, which is tools and yeah, and and, and thinking, coats. yeah, and 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 killing lots of seals, uh, <laughs> yes. which is how people adapt everywhere. Yeah, killing they seals. kill seals. That's uh, that's how I adapted to moving to the big city. <laughs> right, uh-huh. right, exactly. So, Without killed some seals. Yeah, I'm sure that's them. how you adapted to, to moving to Japan. Oh, of course. And, uh, as soon as I got here, I killed a couple of Japanese seals and I was in. Yeah. Good the difference. Know. The difference between high school and college, uh, you know, it, it took a lot of seals to find that. Um, right, exactly. It takes a lot of seals to find yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, uh, no, it's just, so, yeah, it, we start right into it at the very beginning, and yeah. you can kind of gloss over it, but it's it ruined the movie for me much more this yeah. time than it did last it's, time. I don't think it's necessarily something you can gloss over. It's something that if, if you I don't think I read the title me, cards last time. I think that's it, what must have happened. Maybe, maybe. Maybe you just watched the movie. Maybe I think maybe I was like, uh, title cards, screw this. <laughs> I'm not reading. <laughs> reading? This is a silent picture. Oh, I don't even it was also it was nothing. also like a it was a film class, and those were those are stupid. Anyway, <laughs> I think I just slept. Anyway, oh, probably, probably that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> it's dark. You're it's, watching it's a movie that has no words. <laughs> one note. One note I did see here uh, said that in the in the initial filming. Uh, obviously, you know he's kind of traveling. He alone. tried like four times, from what I read yeah, in like he, the doc. He tried a whole bunch of different Wikipedia. stuff, but most of you know we were presented with this very and, and obviously faked uh, traditionalism. You know, there's absolutely no Western influence on these Inuit. Oh, I know. And going to the though, big, the white man's igloo, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I almost punched my computer. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, so, no, wait, that won't hurt him. So it's 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 very contrived in how it presents things, and you know, to an extent, his heart's in a good place because he it wants is. to show how they traditionally did it. 
And he doesn't want to show how they live today by such a mark. Yeah, um, but you know, it's 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 interesting because not only not only historically were they already you know using using more uh, well, it's hard to say Western since it's just Southern to them. Um, <laughs> yeah, weapons, right. Weapons and, and clothing, um, and they uh, you know they. Where was I going with this? Uh, from what I've read. A lot of the Inuit knew more about his camera than he did, because he only took a course <laughs> on it. Well, no, yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, it, it would be like in 1922 trying to go make a kind of mediocre, noble, savage-esque documentary about regular Nor- uh, North American, Native American tribes, yeah. where they would laugh at you and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I mean, okay. and that, and that. So I mean, it's it's a problem. It, it, yeah. And I understand really what he wants to do. And and I understand why the whatever the name of the the actual name of the Inuit he was dealing with. Yeah, because got it on wasn't board. Nanook. Yeah, uh-huh. certainly not Nanook. Um, got on board. It's like, oh, this is a chance to show what my society, future generations, and yeah. people now, what my society used to look like. The way we used to do things, and I can accept that as a. It's just, yeah. it's not what happens in the film. It's no. the extra bits in between where he decides to tell us what's no, going to happen in the film. No, there's there's parts where it's what happens too. Well, you but know, I didn't when have as much when he goes to the trading pl- uh, trading post and he doesn't understand the concept of a phonograph, and he okay, it. yeah, that's true. That is that is an over the top. This guy's dumb because he doesn't understand our society. Uh, and it's it's completely incongruent to the rest of the movie, even, uh, you know. And and I think I ignored that portion. Yeah, and it's good to ignore that portion. I mean, uh, I'm talking about the terrible. general out in the snow parts. I think yeah. are very acceptable. Like, yeah. I'm going to show you what we did. Yeah, five hundred. And the just ago. the justification that that Flaherty uses for that is, you know, yeah, I staged it. Maybe I told I took away their guns and their jeans. And told them, <laughs> yeah, told them yeah. to do this, but they're still doing it. They're still they're still presenting it in the culture of in their traditional right. culture, and they're doing a good job of it. That's the other there's a big issue. There's it's a like, difference between scripting and faking to a certain extent. And I and I don't have a huge problem with that. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. like uh, comments I've read about this about talking about how it's all fake. And yeah. no, I don't think that's the right word. Especially if he asks them and says, well, what did you do 500 years ago? What did your grandpa do? Can you show me what your grandpa did? Because obviously the generations in the Inuit, they're 250 year generations. Well, (laughs) yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, the things get passed down. How to do things get passed down. Exactly. I mean, lots of, not as much Americans, but um, even Americans know how to do things a way that they, nobody does anymore. Yeah. Now, there are unfortunately. I know how to use a rotary phone, Adam. Do you? Yes. I, I I saw one the other day, completely lost. <laughs> you uh, threw it through the window. Um, <laughs> like, I I kept pressing the circles. And but you you know what anything. I mean, right? You know, no. show you learn from people yeah. before you how to do things that you don't would never consider actually doing them that way. But even so, there are unfortunate instances in this movie where even you know we can we can justify a few things, but even then he he is actually faking. Like the where where he catches the steel under the ice, um, you know that's the rope is circled back under the ice, and there's someone else pulling the rope. The steel right. that they pull out of the water is already dead. Um, yeah, and yeah, and we get into that sort of thing, and yeah, and and yet, considering we live in a world where there's reality television, yeah, um, I can accept. Is, and reality is television much, is often labeled by people as television. In yeah. lo- it, but reality television oftentimes gets muddled up with documentary television making. This is in... what happens when people stop living and just get real. Right, exactly. <laughs> they they yell at each other in a house. Um, yes. But you but you see what I'm saying as far as like, I still don't yeah. have a huge problem. I mean, I watch things like Anthony Bourdain, okay? Yeah. And things on there are staged all the time. But it is still essentially a sort of semi demi uh, 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 documentary television. Okay. Yeah. He's like, but he'll, but I like the fact that, you know, that's getting into another subject because they'll acknowledge, look, we couldn't actually catch a fish. 
So yeah. we just bought a fish and pulled it out for the point of making a good scene. because yeah, we because we wanted to talk about the fish. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we got to get there some way or another. Yeah. And I understand that that's a thing that he's doing as well. But the problem yeah. is, for me, is still when he decides, when he is telling us what this is about. Yeah. When he is telling us, from his perspective, what the Inuit are all about, that's where it gets kind of gross. Yeah. Where it's like... Yeah. So you're going to tell us about these people who probably do speak English or at least French, uh, what they're all about? Yeah, that's where it gets upsetting. Yeah, he doesn't really let them tell their. They story. don't do anything. They don't. They are not the ones who are yeah. telling us what Inuits are about. He's the one telling us yeah. what Inuits are about, yeah. and that's gross. And it's not just. It's not just you know this idea that you can't observe without affecting. He's actively affecting. Yeah, he's purposely changing what's yeah. going on. And again, I understand. I'm going to take away your jeans. I'm going to take away your guns. And please put that cigarette out behind the igloo. Uh, but, like, yeah, I'm fine with all of that. Because if you think that do- documentaries are made without ever anybody, like, rigging it, that's yeah. nonsense. That's, yeah, sure, if you have the rest of your life to take yeah. footage. You might get everything you need there to is, make all there's the actually, points. There's a really great documentary. It's one of my favorite documentaries uh, called F for Fake. And it is a criterion, but it's spine number like 280. Right, we'll get there. So by the, by the time we get there, we'll have forgotten this conversation entirely. I won't. Um, <laughs> yes. I'll never forget. But, uh, but it's it's done by Orson Welles. And it is this uh, guy named Clifford Irving wrote a book called Fake about Almir de Hori, who is an art forger, a modernist art forger. He did Picasso's, he did, you know, very, you know, modern, abstract sort of things. Um, and, you know, the director of the movie uh, started, he wanted, he worked with Irving, they were going to make a documentary version of the book. And while they were making that, Irving released his new book about Howard Hughes, okay. uh, which is the famously faked biography of Howard Hughes. And it came out that it was fake, and the whole the whole thing was falling apart. And Orson Welles stepped in and said, Hey, you're making a movie about an art forger. Let's just modify this a little and make a movie about fakery. Um, <laughs> Well, then I'm actually so excited about this film. Yeah, that it's a really fun movie. It's a really fun and interesting movie. Um, but uh, one of the things they say is, you know, as long as as long as there's experts, there will be fakers. You know? Well, and and, and 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 they will oftentimes I think will probably be one in the same. Yeah, and often they are one in the same. That's yeah. one of the things. That's one of the things the movie gets into. So you know, it's. Flaherty is presenting himself as an expert because he's presenting the only bit of information the general public is going to have about these people, uh, and he's he's lying through his teeth. Right, and it's and it's part. interesting because yeah, he's painting a picture that <laughs> is the only piece of information many people <laughs> might have yeah. will ever get on yeah. these people. Because, I mean, the Inuits are not exactly widely talked about, even at this point. Yeah. And it, it's it's sad, is what it yeah. is. It's sad yeah, that, it's... like, he couldn't do it in a more honest way, but I'm not going to call him a faker. In that, no. I don't think he faked that much more than other documentary filmmakers fake. Yeah. And that, well, that's one of the problems, I think, one of the problems with documentaries is that, you know... Um, there's always editing. It's not just right. It's us never watching. just yeah a raw feed. It's of not us people doing. As it. soon as you may, as soon as you make an edit, you're making a narrative. Right, and we get into this one point. Is that unfortunately, I all I do not know enough about Inuit culture to call whether or not. That's the other issue. Is I am there. Are, it's dubious about what parts are fake in the sense that he staged them, which I do not have a yeah. problem with, and what parts are fake in the sense that he invented them whole cloth. Yeah, and then I the think, Inuits I, are like, "Why do you want me to do that?" Yeah. yeah, I think I think the only scene where that necessarily happened would be the scene with the trade uh, trading. Post. That's my guess too. 
is and yeah. possibly because it plays like a clown car, but I don't actually know because maybe that's how you travel. Um, the uh, the scene where they're all getting out of the kayak, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. and and he gets out, and the one kid's clinging to the front, and he gets off, and then the wife crawls out of the kayak, and then another baby crawls out behind her. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's, it's there's a, a few it's, there's a few weird ones like that and like yeah i i don't know i don't know how how true to life that might be and that's that's one spot where i don't know how true to life <laughs> but that, that might may be. also be a, a fundamental <laughs> uh problem with the fact that they don't ever use that kind yeah. of kayak anymore so they're all like oh my yeah, god exactly. how do we get out of this thing it's a flat <laughs> yes, just, just everybody just crawling out um yeah but you know, there's 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 scenes in this that are very clearly true to life. You know, while the while the catching of the seal, you know, the seal is already dead. The whole butchering scene, um, and you know that that as a piece of cinema was very nice between them butchering the seal intercut with the snarling dogs. Yeah, um, that was a very as a as a piece of as a piece of film that was a good scene. Um, but again, and, and you know, then, once and you I start making it, edits, yeah, you're making a narrative. Right. And then also, it, with that, I think we're probably a little bit closer to true to life at that point because yeah. probably at that time, although they're using guns, they are still hunting seals. Yeah. And they're still they're still probably seals. butchering them on the spot because that's what hunters yeah. do. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And so, and so still, we, we're still seeing authentic elements of what they do. Yeah, maybe they gave them a different yeah. tool to use. You, yeah. Normally, they might be using a. They will probably be using a regular hunting knife. Yeah. But you know, you hand a hunter a sharp piece of stone, he's still going to know the general the general <laughs> gist of it. Yeah, yeah. He may not like to use. That right. He may be like, "Why do you want me to use this again?" But yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, there's elements like that where it's like, "Oh, okay, so this is just this is fine. Yeah. This is acceptable." Yeah. And, apparently, apparently during the walrus hunt scene. For instance, uh, it was going very poorly, and they kept yelling at uh, Flatterly to drop the camera and grab a rifle and save them. <laughs> yeah. um, and he just kept the film running, uh, which made a great scene, and no one was hurt, and that's great. But there is a sequence not in the movie uh, of a failed polar bear hunt. Oh my um, goodness! Where uh, uh, everybody gets stranded. And they end up nearly starving to death. Oh my God! Um, so you know, there's, there's, there's certainly there's realism to what's going on because there have to be they're actually doing this. Right, they are having to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like yeah. real or fake, they are still. I mean, they build that igloo. Yeah, they definitely there's, build that igloo. Fake and that. I mean, that is a great scene, and I and I like how that plays out because it's you know they're 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 out there. And they build the igloo, so they need shelter. And then we talk about how we heat the igloo, so we focus on the on the moss and the fire. Yeah. And then it's dark inside the igloo, so let's bring in a light and and get the window in there. And it's you know it's very it's very humanistic the way that's presented. Shelter, heat. Yeah, comfort. and and it's totally <clears throat> if if the rest of the movie were like that. <laughs> yeah. Without the editorialization, <laughs> it would have been great. It would have been yeah. It should. It probably wouldn't have been the theater length. No. Uh, but it would have been a nice little compact documentary about traditional Inuit life. Yeah. Uh, but instead, yeah, it has those extra bits. It has a man biting a phonograph for no reason. Uh, yes. It has a couple other little bits like that. That I mean. Well, I, I don't even understand what the motivation for biting it would be. So, I don't uh, know. It, it doesn't look like food to anybody. If you're being tricked into believing that there's tiny men in the machine singing or whatnot, you don't bite the record to prove it's dead. Um, yeah, and that <laughs> yeah, and that's that's where we're getting into like yeah, just that sort so of casual you, racism of yeah. like, oh, he's yeah. he's so this will be funny. See, he's so you're confused. Innocent. You don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just like. And I'm sure that the guy who's, for lack of a better yeah. word, playing at Nanook, just thought it was funny, and agreed yeah. and said, no, "I'm sure, I'm sure he did." Yeah, because it is kind of paid. funny, and I mean, kind but of like was, sliding down the hill paid. and some other stuff like that. He's getting paid, and so, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll do whatever you say. Another element of fakery in this: uh, the woman playing Nanook's wife, not Nanook's wife, 
wife, uh, actually Flatterly's kind of uh, mistress, apparently. He's, that is a very interesting he's, fact. His, Thank you, his Adam. Inuit, his Inuit common law wife. Right, right. Wife, right. He's, uh, his, despite his, act, his wife back in actual society. <laughs> wow. That's way a, to put that, but that is an, uh, a yeah good good word choice, Adam. Uh, yeah, I was going to refer to him as as her as his northern concubine. So yeah, I guess we, we both kind of missed on the, the word choice, but uh, uh, let's uh, you know it's all this racism is really <laughs> yeah right. It's hard not to like you end up. It's like yeah. taking a racism bath, and like it kind yeah. of drips. It, some of it seeps in, and you can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really want to talk about this movie on its terms, and that's because yeah. because its terms are bad terms. Yeah, it's just really it's hard to deal with because uh, as it's not just like I said, it's not just because we're modern Americans. It's also yeah. because even for its time, this is racist. Yeah, this is very behind yeah. the modern thinking at the time. I think, and and I mean, yeah. So, first documentary that's not really a documentary. I don't know what else to say time. about it. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's, and, and like, I heard a couple of people like, oh, it's, it's very pretty. And it's like, well, no, it is, but it's well, only pretty because if you, t- I think, I think a monkey with a camera could make the Arctic look pretty. Yeah. You know what you I know, mean? You, you, pan, you pan enough, it's fine. Yeah. And, you know, we get, we get that in a lot of the other movies we We've seen, not necessarily, and not even, you know, obviously this is the first documentary we watched as part of the Criterion. But, you know, like, like, uh, Walkabout does, and, and. Yeah, if you're in a pretty enough place, off. you don't have to do any yeah. work. You just, you just pan across the environment to, to establish that the environment is, is hostile in itself. Um, you know, they do a lot of, they do a lot of long cuts, and the, the scene of him jumping across the ice flows, um, that just establish how hostile the environment is. And it's beautiful. And, yeah, it's, well and, it, and it's a good thing in a documentary about people living yeah. in a hostile environment is to, sh- okay, this is yeah. a hostile environment. Yeah, we need to showcase how hostile that is. And you, know you know what I did it's... love? I did love the kind of kind of early Disney era graphics at the beginning explaining where the bay was. Love yes. that. Yes. I love that pencil, like that sort of like ink on celluloid drawing I love it when they do that. Yes, that was that was very nice, actually. I I, I did. Like I, that. I I always um, that's I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff, and like that that was probably like the most sophisticated thing he did. He probably had to pay a guy to cer- do that. I'm guessing that was, that was certainly the pr- most sophisticated thing he did. Oh, uh, maybe he paid Walt Disney to do it. You never know. Really yeah, I mean, I just I no, remember I seeing that in like uh, those kind of that era war documentaries and stuff like that. They would always do yeah. yeah. That kind of like okay, we, yeah, it's a pretty common. Yeah, and I I always love it when I see that. And so for me, that was the highlight of the film <laughs> was seeing that like yeah. the bay map. I loved it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the sort of thing that you know eventually morphed into the uh, Indiana Jones track. Exactly, I with, love with it. Dotted arrows along. Yes, and yeah, it's, it's which eventually it's, it's a yeah, nice effect. Yeah, it, it, I love it. It's my one of my favorite things. It's certainly my favorite thing in this film, which is kind of sad. <laughs> uh, and no, it, it's yeah, I, like, I don't... It's it's just really hard to get over the hump of the problems because they think, are the movie. Yeah. One of one of the issues, I think, in trying to establish this as a hostile environment, are, are but you still being, staging what's everything... What's going on in your... In, what's Did going you suddenly on? get a lot of background yeah. news? I apologize... My roommate just got in the shower. Okay, I thought maybe you were... Are, I thought it was like, is it like yeah. helicopter yeah. day again, or... <laughs> There's a lot of weird noises uh, in my in my environment, and I apologize uh, profusely. Um, well, you gotta fire that Foley at least, artist. At least just once. I have a terrible Foley artist. He doesn't listen to me, he just does whatever <laughs> he, he wants. Makes, sits he behind makes me the entire time. shower noises, it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, he's very good at what he does. The helicopter is expertly done. Right, and it's um, all with his mouth. It's amazing. It's all with it. Yeah, he's a it's like Michael that guy Winslow. from Police Academy. Yeah, Michael Winslow. Thank you for remembering his name. Yeah, I only remember because <laughs> I always felt like he should be a member of Family Matters. 
<laughs> Carl Winslow's brother. Right, so somehow they should have brought him great. in just for, for fun, I always felt. Yeah, that's, it seems like the sort of, I mean, if if uh, Steve Urkel can show up on Family Matters. Exactly. Carl Win- <laughs> Why not Carl, or uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Winslow. Winslow and Carl Winslow can be can be Just brothers. for one episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just for one episode. <laughs> okay, so back on track. Um, I will say no, that the there's, music there's... in the Criterion version, which of course in a silent film has nothing to do with the actual music from the original showing. Yeah, I would like to know. I would like, I to, would know like to know too. Is this the original score? Yeah, it was um, quite that's, nice. That's the sort of. I don't like. I don't like asking questions like that. this. Is the sort of thing we should have researched already? <laughs> no, Adam. No, it's not. <laughs> No, it's not. No, I didn't say it's the sort of thing we would have researched already. It's the sort of thing we should have. No, researched No, no, no. I know, but what I, what I'm saying is that the the theme of this podcast is two average guys talking about the Criterion Collection. Yes. Average people don't research, Adam. That's true. They talk. That's true. Fine, I'll look it uh. up. <laughs> All right, you look it up. I don't know where look I'm going to find out the information. For yeah, this. don't don't bother looking it up. The music is great. Whoever That's my point. Music, is it's whether, lovely. Whether it's original or or whether I mean, obviously, obviously, silent films had scores that they were released with. They weren't, you know, it's you'd have right. And sometimes those are lost, and sometimes those aren't. Sometimes, and that's the issue because yeah. we watched another silent film where they clearly stated in one of the things I was reading. Oh, it was lost. The original score was lost, so we filled in. We we yeah. hired a composer to make something that is nice. Yeah, and this was very nice, and it worked. Yeah, really and well. that's not my point. Is yeah. it was very nice. Obviously, if it was done, you know, it, whether it was done in 1922 or done in 1998, uh, it's still the guy who composed it did very well. Yeah, it doesn't matter who he is. It it, it only matters yeah. that he did a great job. And it's not it's not like it's not like they had an orchestra standing behind the camera no matter what. It was done post production. Um, yeah, yeah, we're cool. Whenever this, it was yeah. done. So Um so, I will yeah. say that um I'm now on the Wikipedia page. Uh okay. and yeah. it's amazing how often uh, this is referenced in popular media. Well yeah. I'm just, it's a, it's a very it was silly a very popular thing at the time. <laughs> yeah. And hey Arnold that person. Of course, in silly ways, because it's it's a silly thing. It's, yeah. I think on its surface, no one... Yeah, everybody has to just know even, when they watch even it. Even the people, uh. even the people, even the people who might seriously believe that this is an actual representation of actual events, it's meant to be silly. It's, it's yeah, meant to be. True. If If you're viewing this as reality, you're viewing it as a, oh, aren't those people weird reality. Yeah, yeah. And, and which yeah. is kind of, I think, yeah. It's, it's a it, failure. It's definitely a failure on a anthropological. Yeah, and I think part of my problem is the fact that it's like, um, it does have that, oh, aren't these guys yeah. so silly? So Yeah, look at them. But yeah. It's I'm still, now reading Roger Ebert's comments about it. <laughs> Thank you for silently reading this to yourself. <laughs> yeah, would you like me to read it out loud? Uh, f- sure, why no, not? No, I'm not going to. Okay, then don't. <laughs> I love you, Pat. Because, <laughs> um, uh, frankly, Roger Ebert likes it too much. Yeah, I, w- I will say that uh, I'm very glad that this was a black and white movie during the butchering scenes. Um <laughs> And I'm very glad there wasn't someone throwing buckets of red paint onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the sort of thing Flatterly might have done right. if he had the paint around. Um, maybe all the paint froze. Maybe that's why they didn't do it. Right? He's like, oh man, I brought all these, I brought all these buckets and I can't use any of them. Uh, it's terrible. Terrible. Um, you know, the interior shots of the... Uh, of the igloo were another thing that was faked because you can't get yeah. a camera in 1922 uh, inside an igloo. Right. Um, yeah, unless the igloo is the size of a house. Yeah, so they built like a, a two-thirds igloo or something, a, a cutaway igloo. Um, Again, I can totally which accept I, that. Which I don't really... It's fine. Which is actually a pretty uh, pretty nice engineering feat in its own, I would think. Because the entire the entire setup of an igloo is that the dome shape keeps it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I'm wondering like, 
what kind of <laughs> things they had to rig up to make that work. Uh, yeah. Maybe it had a just a wood edge on the front end. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's... You know, there's there's good in this movie. There really is. And we can... You know, it, I think that's where we're headed with this whole thing. There's good in this. Yeah, it's, it's not... It's just... There's not... It's not bad. There's not enough good in this. It's, it's not, not bad. bad. It's just... I don't... I both I both understand why it's on the Criterion Collection and cannot fathom why it's on the Criterion Collection. I mean, I understand because it is the first sort of like docudrama yeah. thing where you're like kind of mixing reality with kind of a conceptualization yeah. of reality. Um at the same time, so I understand that that's a a, a milestone. But yeah. at the same time, it's not that great. Yeah. It's kind of like when people say, oh, this thing is important because... Well, it's exactly like this. It's when people say, like, oh, it's important because it invented this thing. It doesn't make it not crap. Does it make sense? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. There's plenty of examples in, like, music and stuff like that. Well, like like Birth of the Nation. Exactly. It's the first oh, epic that's movie. A, you know, I thought about it's that first while accurate I was movie. watching it and yeah. then I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like it's it's the first. It does, epic does that make it not? Yeah, any, it's, it's it doesn't awesome. make it less. <laughs> yeah, Racist. crazy. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a lot, you know, or you know, the fact that Michael Bay is on the Criterion Collection, and we have, you know, we're we're steadily marching toward Armageddon <laughs> I'm so right excited. now. And I mean, I mean the movie and the uh, the time frame that that represents for my life. I believe I believe discussing Armageddon on Lost in Criterion is going to be Armageddon. my personal Armageddon. Um, but uh, but you know Michael Michael Bay, <laughs> yeah, he does what he again. does. Uh, Michael Bay does what he does very well, and, and that, you know, whatever yeah. justification for putting for putting that movie on there or any of his work on there, yeah, what he does is good. But he's he's. He's the king of the poop factory. It's <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Well, and this guy's kind of in the same category. He's a, he's like yeah. He's the best, and, in, and he's the in a, the originator of a thing that shouldn't really be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> so he, like he invented yeah. and and I guess in a certain way he gets that same way that like you can get. Oh man, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna bring in. Was it Rule Thirty Four? He's kind of like Hitler. <laughs> No, that's oh. that's rule thirty four. Is there's sex? Oh shoot! Of it. What's uh, the one with Hitler? Oh, that's the other guy. The name <laughs> Goodwin. Yeah, Goodwin's, Goodwin's law. law. Goodwin's Sorry, law. I got confused. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I could probably have run with the rule thirty four thing and come up with a way to justify <laughs> yeah, probably that too. Did. But you could have justified. But, that, um, but uh, so yeah, my point is simply that you, in a weird, disgusting way, can it. Ah, this is going to go wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is going to go real wrong. My point... I'm going to love it going wrong, though. So <laughs> My point going. is simply that he did a bad thing, and that has helped, yeah. in a certain weird, twisted way, people realize that that's yeah. a bad thing and make better things in the he future. Stands, he stands as a shining negative Exactly. Example. That's what I'm going for. Thank you. Yeah. Adam. And I didn't even have to yes. bring up Hitler only once. Uh, yes. That's My fine. point is simply that, yeah, he's a, he's a brilliant example to future documentary yeah. makers about what not to do. What not to do? Yeah, and we we started this conversation mentioning eugenics. It was inevitably that we uh, inevitable that we did. right exactly. And, so it's and fine. you kind of get that same um, thing you, 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 with your Stalins and your Hitlers and that sort of jazz of like these are great yeah. examples of how not to be a good human being. Yeah, this is this is Nazi anthropology. It is this very is, much is how is. The Nazis it's disgusting. <laughs> it's it's oh well, we're great. Yeah, as having um, a man who eh. spent four years studying anthropology, this movie makes me kind of want to throw up. <laughs> Yes, 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 it does. I mean, but I mean, like, I've, I feel like it should have that effect on anybody who watches it, regardless of how much they know about it. Because, yeah. and it's because not, these ideas are so it's not, even, not acceptable. Yeah, and you, you've said this a couple of times. Uh, I don't necessarily feel like this is a values dissonance thing. No, I don't, I don't feel like so us looking at this in 2012 can say, oh, this is, this is terrible. I, I feel like anyone viewing this right. in 1922 should have like, said, uh, 
uh, are we sure about this? Yeah, and I think but, because you can get no, it's a different. If world. you look on the Wikipedia and some of, like some of the comments about it originate from his time period of uh, people saying, yeah. "Wait a minute." Yeah, people have been complaining about this for a very long time. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, com- um, the comments are as old as the film, of like, well, this doesn't yeah. seem real. There's things wrong yeah. with this. And that's not how Inuits are. And, uh, yeah, so... Yeah. But luckily, it, it um, it's an inspiration to Frank Zappa, and that's all that matters. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, one of its early critics was, you know, a Scottish documentary in John Grierson. Uh, Grierson. Uh, you know, he's the guy who coined the term documentary. So it's not, <coughs> it's not like, uh, it's not like people were uh, uh, completely ignorant of this being dumb. And, you know, at the same time, like you said, it's, it's scholarly people obviously had, well, would have problems with this on its surface. But the general public isn't as dumb as we pretend they are right. sometimes. Good so. news. Um, the guy who played Nana died of tuberculosis, yeah. probably, at home. Yeah. I feel yeah. happy for um, him that yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> the end of the movie and in interviews with, uh, with uh, Flaherty's uh, uh, wife, his actual wife, not his, not his others, um... They repeat, you know, at the end, in the epilogue to this movie, and she repeats that he starved to death two years later, um, which I guess is fine for your narrative, and that's a great ending to things in a way. You know, the environment's so hostile that he couldn't survive, but he died of TB like seven years later. <laughs> it's yeah. the actuality, um, which is, you know, that's just as bad. Um, yeah, but it makes me almost happy to hear that in a weird way, in that, yeah. like, that... At least he didn't start with yeah, death. exactly, yeah, and yeah. also that like it does feed into the oh, th- there's a lot of narrative here. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of narrative here, um, way too much yeah. narrative here. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot. Else no, to say. No, we I'm really nice. have. This is one of those ones yeah. where we have a, a this a is sort of. Insufficient. It's a romanticize. Yeah, it's it's a romanticization. Romanticization. <laughs> I like how you just <laughs> decided to mumble your way through that word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did it twice too. Um, yeah, he romanticizes. There you go. You know, everything, you know, and there's still some amount of documentary value there, but it's well, the, the documentary value is lost. in the actual footage. Not in the things he says. Yeah. It's it's in yeah. the fact that he he asked some people to act like what they what yeah. relatively what they near ancestors have, like. might have done, yeah. and that's worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, you do see that in in anthropology where people say, "Well, how did we do this before we had guns? How yeah. did we do?" And that's a valuable endeavor in and of itself. And so if you strip out everything he says yeah. and then cut out the phonograph and cut out a couple other really awkward scenes, you kind of would have an acceptable, yeah. here's I our think, idea think, of what may have been like for, and, and and you have to couch it in those may have been likes, what we think. Yeah. But it's still a worthwhile endeavor to try and figure out how somebody would hunt yeah. a seal with no gun. Yeah. Yeah, this is a history channel. Yes, show, exactly. Not a, not a documentary. Exactly. That, that, but that yeah. that kind of active look into historical ways of doing things is a is a worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, and is. assuming and, he asked them to yeah. do it and try to figure out how to how their grandfather did it or their great grandfather did it, yeah. rather than just telling them what to do, which we have to assume because we have no way of knowing, then yeah, that's a worthwhile <laughs> thing. If he told them, if you're, if he gave them right. all the instructions and said, "This is how Inuits do this," then of course it's worthless. But we don't know what if which one of those yeah. two things he did. There's evidence out there, I guess, but I'm not convinced one way or the other. So, agreed. Okay. 
So that's Nanook of the North. So the worst named movie that's Nanook ever. Of the North. <laughs> yeah, the, the freaking uh, for, name for context, is racist. Yeah, yeah. For context, Nanook is uh, is an Inuit uh, deity, I suppose. It's it's the word for bear as well, but it's you know, it's the sort of cultural adoration of the bear because that's what their life is. The bear is the provider, food, skins, whatever, you know. But uh. But Nanook is just the word. Would for you polar bear, like basically. me to so. tell you what I do remember reading about the Inuit history of their their origin story? No, let's not do it. Sure, no, I'm not going to do it because I can. Let's not get into. I do remember that. that. Stop! Stop teasing us. It Matt. involves fingers and a boat. <laughs> fingers I'm and a boat. Pretty sure this um, was the Inuit origin story. Yeah. This is their their personal yeah. origin story for humanity. Okay. Okay, involves fingers yeah. and a boat, and 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 a, and a certain oh, I can't remember now. Yeah, it's no good. Princess can't get back <laughs> into the boat because somebody chops her fingers off while she's trying to get into the boat with the oar. They fall down in the ocean. And they become all the sea creatures. Pretty sure. Oh, all the all the fingers became. I'm animals. pretty that's, that's sure. Very, I may be misremembering. That, that was me of, about uh, eight years ago. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch Prometheus no. yet? Because that kind of happened at no. the beginning of Prometheus. So it hasn't come out. It may have come out here. <laughs> um, so I'm just I'm just going to say, uh, disclaimer to anybody listening, if you've taken anthropology classes more recently than I am, <laughs> I don't care. Don't email me. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. If I have it wrong, um, I don't care. And I, I'd just like to add that if you disagree factually with anything that I or Pat have said, uh, please email Pat. <laughs> um, because I want to read those, but I don't want to deal with yeah, them directly. Yeah, right? Email my sister. <laughs> hey, thanks. Um, yes, email that sister. Uh, don't give your I sister's email address. I am certainly not going to. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's the end that. of Dan Rick of the North. We are finished. <laughs> we have wasted yes, these people's time. Thank you once time. again for listening. Right. Uh, next next time we'll be back with uh, the uh, 1966 uh, Andrei Tarkovsky epic uh, Andre sort of semi semi biographical epic, I guess. Andre Rublev uh, about the uh, the Russian painter, um, and that's a really yeah, long movie. We'll so see you we'll then if we make that. it through the watching of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Come again. Come again. <laughs> so come listen again. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that was, was weird. Goodbye. That was weird. <laughs> Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via Lost in Criterion at with two brains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.